forget about this place but i don't want to leave here if you're just gonna stay changing like the seasons been wasting all this time should be like satellites cast me on the sky Good call. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> That's better. How about that? I'll start all over. Cheers, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have checked that. Beginner mistake. I was saying um, I'm trying to go live whenever I can, and sure enough, um, I didn't. Now that I have the stream deck, I can go live, but I didn't check my mute button. So, yeah, that's better. Thanks, Andy. But, uh, yeah, um, nothing nothing in particular tonight. Um, I was in hardware debugging mode last night with the ESP32s. Um, this is the project I'm working on currently um, that I'm going to be using. There's a crossover between this channel and my Make Me Outdoors channel. Um, I'm going to use this um, for, well, not for tuning myself, but I could use it for tuning um, my chainsaws or any other engine. Um, this is a high temp thermocouple, uh, Max 6675, going into my new favorite board, these ESP32 Lowland lights. Um, uh yeah live demo sure uh yeah uh, we can do a live demo so the elon light uh, definitely my new favorite board because of the lipo battery monitoring and and charging on board uh pretty simple little circuit i'm sure there's lots of others out there but i'm really starting to like it so this thing is kicking my ass for two days and i finally got it debugged and sorted out and uh, basically what we can do is monitor high temperatures and um uh, plot it to the web page live so I've got um, engine doctor as the the AP name so it sets itself up as an AP and let me just fire it up I hit reload right now it's still setting up as a ESP weather station because the code was originally Rui Santos but down here is our live thermocouple readings coming in. How cool is that? Live on demand. If I stick my hand on there, we should see the temperature start to climb. I know that webcam doesn't like to focus this close, but there we go, you can see it climbing. So this um, uh, was originally written for the BME 280, and I will add the BME 280 to it. And that will monitor the enclosure, and then the thermocouple we can stick wherever we want. And then um, what I'll do is uh, I'll probably try making a inductive tachometer pickup for it too, which is just a wire. Uh, may need uh, some amplification circuit or filtering. And uh, I'll see if I can do an interrupt in the ESP32 and count uh, revolutions per minute of, uh, of the saw or engine that I'm monitoring. It'd be pretty cool. It's a fun little project. I'm going to like it. Um, I'm happy now, uh, after the thing kicked my butt there for a bit, uh, I finally got it debugged. I was into decoding the backtrace and all the fun stuff, and uh, it turned out uh, it was actually the BME code <laughs> that's running that with no hardware hooked to it that's, that's the culprit. I'm not sure there still may be problems with that code um, with my setup, but I don't think so. His Rui had it working just fine with his, so um, when that hardware comes in, we'll give it a try. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So I got lots of thermocouples and a whole bunch more coming so I can make some kits for this. I have to design a 3D printed enclosure and we'll be all set. It'll be fun. So some more goodies recently came in, these accelerometers. I might just play with one of these at some point. These are the GY521s. Um, 
I just wanted to file them away. And I thought, well, might as well be streaming and hanging out with you guys if I'm putting stuff away and working on things. I think what we'll do is I'll start a, a little repository for the parts for this. Yes. Let's do. I love these little dollar store uh, bins now for projects and, uh, well, just life stuff in general. So um, we'll do. This thing is going to be in GitHub. I called it the Engine Doctor. Um, I like the Saw Doctor. I think the Saw guys, those performance chainsaw guys, I think are going to like it. But. Uh, I don't know how many performance chainsaw guys there are that are into electronics. It's probably myself and a couple others in the, in the world. It's kind of a, uh, an eclectic mix, I suppose. But um, that's why I can make some kits. And I could even hook them up with an assembled one, I guess, if there's interest. I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely, like, it's not something I'm going to do for profit. It's just something I'm doing because as usual because I can so yeah this will be this is all set so now um, what I ended up doing I couldn't um, I couldn't oh, one second. Uh, yeah yeah you definitely this uh, I love this this Dymo unit it, it's one of my favorite labelers I really uh, I had one other um, Kind of a little cheaper one than this, and this one's a cheap one. Uh, it it didn't hold up, but this one I've had for years and years and years. The only thing is, don't buy the no-name labels. Uh, at least not these ones. Whatever these are from Amazon, those are they're junk. They don't adhere. This this one's pretty good, but they they love to peel. I have to put tape over top of them. It's very annoying. But anyway, what I was saying, I couldn't find from my new favorite board it's a rare board there's not a lot of them out there and i i couldn't find a footprint anywhere um well with that said i couldn't find uh, a component library what i f i found the pcb um no problem um easy eda has uh, numerous copies of it stored and it's perfect but i in my efforts i couldn't i couldn't seem to transpose that into a component for KiCad or KiCad. Uh, I, I, I tried and it just got frustrating and like uh, it's not something I want to spend my time on so I went to Fiverr. Actually when I googled Fiverr came up and sure enough there's a whole bunch of people on there with Fiverr gigs who make either PCBs for you or um, component libraries for KiCad. So a few bucks later, and I just got the mail a few minutes ago saying he had completed the footprint, the component library for this. So now I can make a proper PCB to have um, the 6675 and the BME 280 and then my tachometer circuit and anything else. So yeah, and then I'll have PCB way fabricate it. It's gonna be fun. I'm pretty excited. I'm actually pretty jazzed about that. Cheers, Johnny. How are you, buddy? Um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. So um, I don't know whether I was muted at the time, but uh, I went on AliExpress and ordered a bunch of a bunch more of those. So I'm pretty excited about when those come in. AliExpress is now officially way cheaper than eBay for almost everything these days uh, from Canada. It just eBay kept. Um, adapting their their shipping up and making it more difficult for vendors and then the vendors started jumping on the bandwagon of charging more shipping because they could pocket the money so it, it just caused this big vicious cycle and AliExpress seems to not be affected so uh, yeah ordered some AliExpress stuff but, but a whole bunch of these nifty little alligator clips and all my meter lead wire those came in in a mailbag there recently that my patrons would have seen um, after midnight oh yeah it's late where you are isn't it yeah i won't keep you up I, i'm not doing anything of any any great excitement here um what i'd hoped i wanted to get one of these out this week this is i am the 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 master of all things esp um caused this one this is the ttgo uh laura 
module all-in-one solution that Andreas uh, was using for his little satellite project recently and he suckered me into it. I thought, who, how cool would that be just to have one of these passively doing sat passes on Laura? Like, why not? And then, uh, if I ever finish it, <coughs> you guys probably haven't seen this. <laughs> haven't seen this yet. I haven't put this together. The video is half shot. This has been sitting on the on the shelf since last year. This is the. Um, this is going to be the uh, Raspberry Pi SATCOM system. This is a fiber box from my day job. And in it should be, I'm just going to take it off camera just in case. Make sure there's nothing that's going to dox me, but I don't think so. I think we're all right. In it is all the components all set. I got everything all set to go in here. Check this out. Got Raspberry Pi uh, 4 the sawbird and goes uh, filter from Noelic, and then in the garage I have uh, a great big Wi-Fi antenna that we're going to set this up to receive the Go satellite weather images with uh, this little software defined radio. Just one of these DVB-Ts. Nothing to it. So yeah, it's been on the shelf forever. I just got the roof done on my garage the other day, so now I can finally put up that the satellite dish. The the Wi-Fi antenna, basically, and uh, yeah, it should be good. I think that's one. This goes 1.2 gigahertz, I think. I forget, something like that. Um, <laughs> in his pajamas, <laughs> yeah. So I even, of course, I put the vinyl cutter to work. Yeah, spiffy. Pretty happy with that. So we'll set this up. And then what I'll do is I will add this in as well and do an SMA cable. I might need to do a, a small amplifier depending on the cable run. This is going to be pretty close though. Um, I should be able to actually have this right on the wall and just run the lines, the coax out, uh, out to the antenna outside. And the 433 antenna is nothing for this, just a little rubber duck. And I'll, I'll hook it up to the network and we'll have... Um, both systems I'll get live weather images from the Go satellite which is going to be super cool those are freaking awesome I've decoded the Meteor and the NOAA sats but the Go's is like way way it's a geostationary satellite way the hell out there so um, that's going to be fun uh, I'm kind of excited about that so but I just got to get one of these programmed up uh, I've never played with these but oh yeah there's the rubber duck down in the bottom so they did come with an antenna which is going to be yeah, that's going to be super cool. I just need a little SMA run. Um, I forget. I'll have to check out what what coax I need for that frequency. I'm not that good with RF to know it off the top of my head. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to enjoy that project. A vinyl cutter. Yeah, I have the Cricut. Um, I love the vinyl cutter. Like. For just silly things like that, they, there's nothing to it. Uh, the, I have the Cricut Maker Maker Air, I believe, and it's it's not cheap. Um, it it's it was expensive, really, in my mind. Like, I it basically almost cost me as much as my laser cutter. But now that I have one, I don't use it a lot. Like, I use my 3D printer and my laser cutter way more. But for fit and finish of projects and, and just being able to vinyl cut stuff like that, it, it is super cool to have. I, I'm, I do not regret the purchase, even though it was expensive at all. <laughs> Pajamas. Oh, I definitely, uh, that was a lot of fun, so. And... And that is the play boards. Oh, the other thing I want to play with, some STMs. I haven't put in enough time into the STM32 boards, but um, I've been playing with like the STM32 F405s on these Pi boards. I did a video not that long ago, and it's still yet to come out. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. And actually, the video is sitting, waiting to be edited on these um, 
these lowland light boards. I think, like, I, I really think they actually are phased out. I don't think they ever caught on. I don't think anybody ever even gave them any any mind at all. Then it's really, really weird why they flopped. Like, I know Sion has his STM, his uh, ESP32 stuff, um, but I actually don't know much about his boards. But for like two bucks on AliExpress, like two something Canadian, I got them for. Uh, it's it so hard to beat with battery. Uh, battery charge on board for a single cell lipo pretty happy so yeah really happy with how that turned out live demo done in the bag I had the scope out last night trying to debug it the the Wi-Fi would just disconnect and thanks to Brian um, and one other member I don't remember the name I'm a horrible person on uh, on our maker discord helped me out and that was that was helpful just to talk it through. It ended up, um, what I found was unrelated to any of the help uh, on there, but it uh, talking to other like-minded people like you guys really helps me. It just wow, kind of gets you out of a rut and makes you think. It makes you think a little different or, or step back and try again kind of thing. And Yep, it was no problem after that. I just kept debugging. It was, uh, yeah, all good. Um, does it use normal vinyl? No, not special vinyl, just normal. Um, the Cricut uses, uh, it's in the other room and I can't go mobile right now. Um, just standard rolls. Uh, Amazon sells, it keeps all kinds of it. And then if you have local, if you're not in lockdown like here, um, all the local craft stores keep rolls of it. Like even, even our dollar store here in where I live, a small town, um, I noticed had rolls of vinyl. Um, I don't know the quality or how good it is, but yeah, just the cheap stuff seems to work fine on the Cricut. You just adjust it. The Cricut, you can adjust the the different pressure of the of the cutting head uh, to more or less. Yeah, it's more uh, average or less, and I always use more on these the stickers that I make. Um, this is just photo paper, sticky photo paper, and then I clear coat them. Um, with dollar store clear coat now it works way better than these early ones but uh, the more pressure seems to cut through just fine it just sticks you just stick it to a cutting mat like this and it cuts out no problem and then the cutting mats are reusable and you clean them up the adhesive gets a little sticky on them eventually and uh, clean them up with dish soap and yeah there's nothing to it it's uh, nothing special and then I like like I said the sticker stuff works good I have some heat transfer vinyl as well, but I haven't tried it yet for doing t-shirts. Um, truthfully, with the pandemic hit, I needed some fresh t-shirts, so I stole all the ones that I had ready to do uh, uh, maker shirts on. I, uh, I ended up just wearing them as undershirts because everything's closed here and we're in full bloody lockdown again for the third or fourth time. This time we failed miserably. Yeah, lots of fun. But I highly advise anyone to take a look. The Cricut stuff, the only problem is, is proprietary software. And they got, so they got whomped recently. Cricut went, the proprietary software, they, they, they went to a subscription service where they were going to cut back all their free options. and But they cut it back way too much. And there was a huge mutiny um, and a huge, all the, all, all the, the mom crafters out there went bananas and started up all these petitions one of which i signed had like thirty thousand names on it like the very first day and the ceo went online right away and apologized and said they backtracked all that crap so their their service although you have to use their software um, their service is no longer fully closed or not heading that way but yeah i like it um, video tomorrow guys on the laser cutter um, the final upgrades of my k40 goes out tomorrow it took me forever to edit that sucker and i obviously wanted to check my footage and make sure uh, or check the function of it i've been using that thing for the mods were done eight months ago and i finally uh finally made the video so um i'm gonna play with the hack rf a little bit tonight uh, i have another project in mind and then I'm going to pack everything up. I'm going to head to the bush tomorrow and take some footage for my Make Me Outdoors channel and test out a, a fresh port job I did on my my little Remington chainsaw, the one that tried to kill me. I ported the exhaust and rejetted it, and 
and I'm ready to give it a try. Hopefully, uh, get out there and play in the wilderness tomorrow. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, guys. I'm going to head out. Have a good night. Cheers.